I believe that everybody has a story, and I'm fascinated to hear them. So come with me as we take a walk down Fascination Street. Hey guys, it's Steve Owens here. I want to tell you a little story. My wife is in Evanston, Wyoming on temporary assignment. Since she's away from her cuddly teddy bear, myself, getting to sleep at night has been a little difficult. But luckily she found a product at a local store made by Inhale Health called Electronic Melatonin. Inhale Health presents a disposable vape pen that introduces melatonin directly into your bloodstream. Inhalation allows melatonin to be absorbed instantaneously, providing faster effects than possible through tablets or beverages, with just a few puffs each night before bed. A good night's sleep is just a breath away. My wife actually used this product and it did work. She was able to get restful night's sleep finally after so long. So when she was telling me about it, I told her to bring me one the next time she came home. I used it and I also loved it. It's not easy to get to sleep when your wife is 3,000 miles away. Each vape pen comes preloaded with 400 breaths, which is roughly a one month supply, and is already charged. You don't need to refill it. You don't need to recharge it. When you're done, simply throw it in the recycle bin and order another one. My wife and I love this product so much that I actually reached out to the company and asked them to sponsor my show. And they agreed. So here's what they're going to do. Every one of my listeners who goes to inhalehealth.com and orders any of their seven different vape pen products is going to get a 10% discount plus free shipping when you put in the promo code F s p as in fascination street podcast so there it is guys that's inhalehealth.com 10 percent off any of their seven products free shipping promo code f s p so give it a shot you'll be glad you did and hey guys you're welcome hi everybody this is steve owens from fascination street podcast I really appreciate your listening to the show. I'm having a lot of fun getting to talk to some really fascinating people, and I want to continue doing this, but I need your help. I need you to subscribe and tell people about the show. But the biggest thing you can do to help me is to rate and review the show on iTunes or wherever you listen through. As a special thank you, anyone who rates and or reviews the show, send me a screenshot as proof, and I will mail you a set of three pair of silk cufflinks courtesy of my friends at Menlo House. You can send it via Twitter to at FascinationSTPD, via Instagram to FascinationStreetPod, or email me at FascinationStreetPod at gmail.com. I really appreciate all of you for listening and for helping. Thank you so much. Now let's get to this week's guest. Welcome back, guys. I hope you listened to and enjoyed part one of Jared Bunch. If not, go back and get it right now before you listen to part two. This episode is part two where we talk about Jared's multiple foot and knee surgeries. We talk about him transitioning from the New York Giants to the LA Raiders and the end of his career. We also talk about his transition from NFL football into acting, where he has played George Foreman. He was in Shaft. He was in Django Unchained. We find out how he did at the Pan Am Games in Jiu-Jitsu and the potential of him moving into a head coaching position. Enjoy, guys. This is part two of Jared Bunch. Okay, so a lot of athletes that were in that position yeah. could have just gone off the rails. It happens all the time. You know, like, yeah, you get injured and your career is over and you just go downhill. But that didn't really happen with you. No, it, no but it didn't end up that way. It went downhill. Did it? It went, it went downhill. Oh, it's uh, because it, of that girl. <laughs> No, I left that girl. I left that girl. I left that girl. That You're like, woman, uh, yeah, yeah. you were bad luck. Yeah, yeah, right? Basically, that's what I was thinking. Like, man, if I if I hadn't listened to her, I would went this other direction. That, you know? So, But that was part of it, man. A lot of decisions were made because I was young. We've all been there, man. Yes, yeah. And so uh, after that, I still was making a lot of bad decisions. Not, you know, bad decisions meaning just because I didn't know. So once that career was over, and you I had... never thought it was over. Really? You always thought, I'm I, gonna be, I'll be I'll back? I'll be back. I'll be back. I always thought I'll be back. I'll be back. 
I, I, you know, even with the knee, when I, I thought, I had still had teams that wanted me. Kansas City, Green Bay, they was like, come on, come on, you know, Miami. Uh, come try out. It, yeah. They, they so were you me. trying out in all these places? They called up, so this is what happened. First one was Kansas City. So after after I was with the Raiders, I started seeing that the knee just wasn't coming around. It wasn't coming around. Both of them or just the one? No, just the one. It wasn't coming around. It just couldn't wasn't. Do, couldn't do anything. Every time I tried to do something, Right, and I was taking so many, so many pills, not abusing them, but I was taking more than what I was supposed to for pain. Right, and I said, look, at that time I was only 26. I said, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna do this for 26. Yeah, You're I'm like a baby. Yeah, I'm like, what am I gonna do this for? How long? Right, right? how long am I gonna do this? And I'm, I'm, now I'm only 26. So I said, forget this. I'm going cold turkey, and I went cold turkey on all painkillers. Was your girlfriend there for that? Yeah. Well, at least you didn't have to do that by yourself. That sounds rough. Well, I didn't tell her. It's not like I sat down with her. Well, that's said, true. Right? So it was me saying, I'm too young to be taking all this. All Where this did you get all these smart? Man? No, it was just like you see on TV, it's, this happened, that happened. And I didn't want that happening to me. So I just said, man, I'm 26. There's a lot of forward thinking in your story. <laughs> you know, I mean, from that barrel approach to your right. town to, you know, like, because that opened your eyes to what else is out there. And then seeing all right. these other things happen to these other people, you're like, mm, yeah. that's not going to be that's, me. Yeah. And, and even the, the weightlifting thing, that's right. you got there and, and you got you got shown up the first time and you were like, and not again, again. not and again. Not, that's right. That's badass. That's right. That's right. And, and so when I went cold turkey, uh, it was hard, right? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. But I forgot one important part is when I got the surgery and what had happened was, I got surgery on my foot because that was some, yeah because that was something that was uh over the years of that college one? yeah dude that that just cut that whole leg off that whole leg, <laughs> right, right. So, I mean from the muscles so, of the knees so, to the foot, but it was going from all from college it was a problem they just kept putting it off and then the giant said after the season we're gonna do a surgery on your foot and so I got the surgery on the foot the same leg right so when they did the surgery what, what the problem was is then this knee had no activity. Oh, because it was all laid up. Uh huh. So then that knee so, was like, uh uh-uh, uh. Oh, yes. You forgot about and me. Then, right, yeah. And so finally the foot was right. I started trying to walk. And because this had no activity, it was like all over again terrible. Like the pain was like, and I, I told the doctor, that, listen, that hinge was like a door you hadn't said, opened in a got, long time. Yes. It was I like told, rusty. I said, listen, there is something wrong with this knee. You have to do something or look at it. And he's like, isn't that the one we. I said, yes. It's been bothering me the whole time. But since I haven't been able to exercise, it atrophied. It, it's really a problem. He takes an x-ray. My kneecap was over here. It was on the side. You just floated away. Yes. That muscle was so much. It was just gone. Missing over. And so he's like, oh, you need, you need surgery. Again with but, the surgery. Right? But so at this time, it was February, March, April. And he said, the problem is the surgery that you need could be out for a year. And we don't want to do that. A year? He said, you're too and this close. this is when you're trying to make a comeback. He said, it's too close for the season. It's called a realignment. That means where they had to take it and go in, cut it, realign it, then sew it back down you know, where it's supposed to be. And the fact that you had to cut it and then sew it back down, that's what the big problem is. Right. All yeah. that, that healing from, yeah, the, from yeah. the incision. So really. you're gonna take, it's going to take from the trauma two months, right? Two months just for that. And then you start doing your rehab. So what are they just like, no, nah, that's cool. Just leave so your kneecap he, no, over No, so there. what he said is, what, but he should have never told me that. Because when he told me that, that's what I think I need, period. Then he's like, no, but you know what? We can do a lateral release. And you'll be able to play this year if we do a lateral release. That and sounds I, like shooting up a horse right before the race because so, you want him to race. Yes, yeah, so, and that's what I thought too. I said, wait a minute, you just told me I needed alignment. Now you're saying a lateral release will work? I want what's going to work for good, not just something to fix me for this year. You know what? When I was coming here, I had a choice. Uber pool will get me here. Or Uber X will get me here on time. <laughs> you see? <laughs> you see? Exactly. And, and so that is what I said. No, no, no. And I went, I went got my own doctor. And so this was the team doctor. That was, was, like, a, that well, was the Giants team doctor. Those guys pay me, so we're going to get you to help them out. So I said... I went to a t- uh, regular position who does a lot of, he did a lot of players. And I said, listen, they told me I, I needed alignment, but uh, but a lateral release will work. Is what a lateral release, is that the thing that should be done? 
or is is that just a band aid? Is just a quick fix? And he says he said no. A lateral release is sufficient. It would be all right. He said nobody's going to do a, a realignment for you. Shoot, that's there ain't no guarantee you come back from that. That's that's a year. Really? Yeah. He's like that's a year. Just so you got a second opinion, yep. and that second opinion just happened to agree with agree the first with opinion. Right. So I said, all right, well I'll let you do it. So the second guy. Yeah. Yeah, I got it with it. Okay, right. cool. And so he did it, and I, I came out here to California, and he's out here Palo Alto, and then. I did my rehab right here at Curlin and Joe. I was there every day. Giants paid for it, took care of it. They knew they followed me. I, I went back a couple of times to let them see. When I got back there, they were like, man, you look really in good shape. You really, you know. Because you're work, working out. I you're work, the incredible Hulk again. Yeah, yep. But the problem was I could do that all in the, in the gym. As soon as I went out on the field. Really? Did you lose a step? Oh, yeah. Lost a step. And then it was like, it would swell up. Go out one day, that next day, boom, swell up. And at that level, you miss a step and that's it. You miss, yeah. My mind was telling me, go over here. Too late. Really? Yep. Too late. Okay. Too late. So that's when the Giants said, uh, you know, when I came in to take the physical, I didn't pass the qualifying the physical or whatever to make sure you're good for the team. To make sure that you get your money. Like I remember I told you, uh-huh. every, every oh, year. Oh, that's right. As long as you qualify. As long as you qualify, right? And so somehow that I was put on what's called a physically unable to perform that. PUP. And then when the last, the last cut came, and you're not allowed to be cut from the PUP list, or they just got to pay you your whole salary. Really? Right. They did all their cuts, and what happens when they cut, the next day, everybody goes through the roster to pick up somebody's contract. They, they see somebody who was released, they pick up the contract, right? right? Sort of like how a fantasy football draft exactly. works nowadays. Pick them up quick, right? And fill up your roster. So the Giants did, they didn't cut me till after that. Because they want to see if they could get something for you. Not necessarily get something for me, but I couldn't go nowhere. Oh. Because if, if they cut me right then, then anybody could pick up my contract, boom. 24 hours, they could pick up my contract. After that 24 hours, where everybody's picked up, okay, they picked this one, that one, picked that one, they got it filled up there. So that's what happened. They released me after that cut. And I should have, if I know, I could have not played no more, done anything, and the Giants would have had to pay me for the whole year. So they didn't have to pay you at all. Because I went into another team. But remember what I said is, if you're physically unable to perform this, P-U-P. they cannot release you. Right. And they did. And they did. teams do it. Teams do it. If they release you from it, all you got to do is just follow, follow a grievance, and then they'll pay you your salary. I didn't. You didn't I, file a grievance? I didn't file a grievance. Why? Because I didn't know at the time. And then I got picked up by another team. So one week I was, one week I didn't play. And that following week, the Raiders. So it goes back to you being young. Right. You just didn't know. Didn't know. Raiders picked me up the, day, the week after. So it was like one week, right? And I was like, whatever. So after what happened with the Raiders, I was there. Went cold turkey. Then I couldn't move. Couldn't move. Missing blocks and everything else. I got released from there. The next week. Kansas City calls. Says, just come. I'm working out. Just come. We just want you to come check us out. We know you're still rehab. I told him, listen, I'm just going to stick around. And what I did is I got surgery on my other foot. I said, listen, I know I'm not ready to play. I'll get my surgery and fix the other foot. What is wrong with your feet, man? They're terrible. (laughs) So I got got the other one fixed. And they said, just come. We want to introduce you to a program, our facility, show you everything. While I'm at the game, in the press box, watching the game, their fullback gets hurt. They call up to the no, press they box. Did not. Tell me they to said, hey, come. Are you ready to suit up? They said, "Can you come down to the medical facility?" They X-rayed everything. They were ready to sign me right then and there because they needed another fullback. And I told them I'm not ready. I took all the X-rays. I did the MRI. I did everything. And I said, because they, they run their fullback towards ACL. So they were like, "Are you ready for next week?" Yes. That's right. Are you ready to practice tomorrow? And I told them, I, I told them I could. And they said, thanks, you know, thanks for being honest, right? But they had me go through everything, and then came in with the general manager. And they said, listen, this is the situation. We th- he's gonna be done. So we need you. So here's sorry. I go back home. Miami Dolphins call. They said, listen, we got one game, a final game of the season. Won't you come down to see us? Just to see us. Okay. They called and, and they was going to do it for the following week. That Sunday. Their fullback tears his ACL. Are you shitting me? I'm not. They called back and said, you were going to come next week. Can you come tomorrow? <laughs> hey, uh, remember hey, how you were going to come next week? week? Yeah. Can you come tomorrow? A little bit of a change of plan. I'm yes. You come right down. And I said, for, for how long? He said, well, pack to stay. We, you know, we're in the playoffs. We, we will buy somebody. you clothes. Just come on up here. Come down. So I packed all my stuff to go down there to stay for, you know, three, a month or whatever. 
cut down and stuff, come down there. And I thought I was just coming down there sign. I get down there and then there's two other guys too, which is okay, fine, it's okay. But I say, I say to them, you know, they put me through a whole battery of tests, did the same thing, they had me out there running on the field, doing all this other stuff. I was like, okay. Then they got me in the room and I said, I told him, listen, I can play on Sunday, but I can't practice throughout the week and then play on Sunday. Not right now. And they said, thanks for being honest. <laughs> You and this honesty yeah, yeah, yeah. nonsense. Because the, the truth of the matter is, seriously, man, it, I couldn't, at that time, I couldn't. I couldn't do it. I mean, I, if, and when I tell you I'm good for one day, that day, that's it. The next day, I am completely out. And maybe the second day after that, too, to come back. And that was it. So then after that, I knew that it was it. When those two things happen back to back, where the fullback gets, both of them get the same thing. Torn ACL. Done. They call me. We want you right now. And I tell them, I can't. And so finally, final straw was, after the season, Kansas City called me up and said, listen, as far as money goes, we can't we can't give you a big signing bonus because we, we don't know how, how well you are. So I said, you know what I'll do? I'll come to your mini camp to show you that I'm back. I go to the mini camp, which is like three day mini camp, and I said to myself, I didn't have it anymore. I didn't like the meetings. I didn't like being out there. So I told my agent, I think that I'm done. Really? Do you want to see if we can go outside? I feel like the music got louder. Oh, got There's a lot more people in here. So how did you transition from that into an acting career? I was out here in LA and the girl who I was dating, she was in entertainment and my closest friends were in entertainment. And uh, they were they actually star they were stars. So they told me you should look into acting. And so what were you doing it. at that time? Just, you know, players here in L.A., it's like, you know, the people you, you're around a lot are in the entertainment business. Okay. You know what I mean? So, yeah. you know, Oscar parties, Grammy party, all these, you know, entertainment parties. A lot of business is made that way, man. Really? You know, yep. Producers think about it, you know. And uh, she suggested, a girl I dated, she suggested that I, you know, go start taking some acting classes or whatever. Did it? You were like, what do I got to lose? Yeah, no, exactly. If you And if you look at the old time football players who became in entertainment, they all played for the LA Rams. Fred Dreyer. Dreyer. All of them. Yeah. You, you name them, they all play yeah, for Because they're here. Because they're here. Interesting. They all play for LA Rams. Fred Dreyer, I think, to me, he... He's the most prevalent one because I grew up watching Hunter. Right. right so right. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. And the guy from uh, Grizzly Adams, what's his, you know that guy? That's too? right. That guy, Merlin Olson. Merlin Olson. Yeah, from the Little House on the Prairie. Right. And uh, what's the big guy from uh, 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 Police Academy? Oh, Hightower. Hightower. Yeah. yeah see, they all all play for the Rams. <laughs> You're right. Yeah, yeah, there's a, I can go down the line, man. Proximity, dude. It's all because they were here. They were here. Yeah, and it made sense to me. So when when I broke up with that girl and moved back to New York, I just decided that, you know it made sense, and so I went to acting school and started auditioning. She went to acting school in New York. In New York, when I moved back to my house in New York, went to acting school and started out auditioning and started booking a lot of commercials, and then started. I got my first big movie was uh, the Don King story. I played George Foreman. Yeah, you did. Yeah, and uh, and almost didn't get that job because I played football. How's that? Because he knew me as a football player. The executive producer knew me as really? a football Really? He was player. like, ah, this is a yeah. football player. Yeah. And so when the director had uh, brought it down to, you know, like a, like three executive producers, like, you know, why why do you still have him in there? He's, isn't he a football player? He's like, he's the best guy, the best guy I've seen. And so when, when I was starting off then, I didn't want to be considered a fo you know football player. So you're like... That was years ago, man. Yes. That's not what I'm doing now. Yep. That's not who I am now. That's right. That's right. And some people, some people, it doesn't work. And some people, they they love the fact that that, that that was a part of my past. Well, you know what? I mean, to even get to the show, right. as far as football, you got to put in a massive amount of work and dedication. Yeah, so, work. yeah but I mean, just, just the fact that you made it that far shows how dedicated you are, how committed you are. So that's gotta that's gotta count for something. Right. Yeah, but uh, outside the lines did a piece on athletes turning actors, and some actors don't like it. And it was on this particular piece. Uh, some actors are like, some, uh, but those, yeah. that dude's an athlete. Why, exactly. Why is he trying to take my job? Yep. Day? Exactly. Okay. And it's actually uh, Samuel L. Jackson. He at that time, back then, he didn't like the fact that uh, athletes were. That must have been wildly uncomfortable. 
<laughs> well, yeah, yeah. But, uh, um, spoiler alert, yeah, y'all were in a movie together. Yeah, yes. And at that time, when we shot that movie, Django and Chain. No, no, no. Before we shot one before that. What was that? Shaft. Oh shit! That's yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. my god. And he, at, at that time, it was only like a year or two since that article came out. <laughs> and at that time, he still he was not he was not on board. And the actual scene that we had to do together got cut. I played a police officer. You got it got cut because he was was he not into it? He was like no, he was not. He was like man, forget no. this dude. My character actually jumps him, beats him up. <laughs> he was like, uh uh-uh, uh, right. not this football player. Right. right. Uh, then, yeah, yeah. That's heartbreaking, dude. Yeah. And no, it wasn't. Not because at Django, he was he he didn't bring it up. He didn't talk about Did it. Did he remember? Do you know? I don't know. I didn't bring it up myself. <laughs> I didn't bring it up myself. But like, he, no, he no, was, I'm not was trying great. to get cut out of this one. He was he was such a uh, different person on Django, man. And we were, I was there for two months. We were shooting Django for two months. Where was that shoot? Uh, well, my part was in New Orleans. Oh, well, that makes sense. He shot all over the place. You all right? Yeah. Smoke? <coughs> no. Protestus? <So. laughs> <laughs> Don't even call your mom. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it was. He, he was cool. He's worked more than any, probably. He's in, in so many things now, man. Back then, he didn't like the fact because he had to work. He had to. Because he had to work for it. He had to work for now, it. Now, I feel like it probably just comes to him. He's, he's earned it, though. Yeah, he has earned it, right? You know? I hope he makes a lot of money on those Capitol oh, commercials. There's no question. He I just, hope he makes trust me, all brother. the money. Trust me. <laughs> Trust me, he is not hurting, a, a, not even a little bit. You think he's all right? <laughs> yeah, I think he's, he's going right. to be okay. Yeah, I think he's going to be quite all right. Yeah. So, I believe you have a, a martial arts history. So, from my injury, what had got me back the quickest was I started training Tai Chi. Why? Because uh, this martial arts guy who was this guru was putting all the football players back together. All the football players? Joe Montana... Uh, he, was, he was fixing these broken yep. athletes. Joe What's Montana. his name? His name is Benny Pota. John Benny Pota. So did he reach out to you, or uh, how did that work? Well, my agent knew him. Okay. Because he was also an agent of some, Your a Your sports of, agent. My football agent. Okay. Yeah, this is when I was still playing football. And he, he said, listen, you're out there in California. I got this guy who's a guru. Go see him. And I'm thinking, oh, it's some old guy or whatever. Man, I got there. He's this bodybuilder. Really? Yeah. Bodybuilder. You're all, uh, so yeah. sir, I, mean, I, I did lift yeah. 600 pounds yeah. oh, when I was 16. He's like, yeah, good for you. <laughs> <laughs> so this built guy who just lives with no furniture, trains martial arts every day. When sunrise, he's training. Really? Yeah. Oh, man, he's he knows his stuff. And whatever he did, he shot the stuff he taught me, it worked. 100% it worked. So it, that's how I got it to start training. People started thinking that, oh, he, that I just wanted to do this martial arts thing. And it was for health. Really? It was just yeah. for rehab? It was just for rehab and health, period. It, it was the best thing. I could do that and, and get my muscles and joints and everything working. And uh, that's how <laughs> they thought I was a martial arts guy. They called me up like, hey, you want to do this, this uh, MMA fight? I was like, how much? They told me how much. I said, yeah. For an MMA fight? Who did I, you we, fight? I fought Michael Westbrook. And How'd that work out? So it worked out fine financially, but I lost the fight because I didn't know. I was I just they called me up, they told me how much was they paid and were you a fighter? No, they knew because I was doing this martial arts all the time. Oh. Right? <laughs> so they see me doing this martial arts all the time, but I was doing it for help. And then I did the Don King story and then so people thought I was a boxer too. Oh, okay, got gotcha. you. Yeah, you know, I did. So it's like, oh, this, he's this fighter guy, and he's doing his martial arts. Uh, so, um, I mean, I guess that makes sense, except that this is sense. Hollywood. No, listen, it will still look good, and and the fact that that I trained with martial arts for a whole for a, for a while to rehab, that's what people knew me as. Oh, they, they thought that I didn't I didn't want to play football anymore. They thought I wanted to do martial arts stuff because uh. I did it so much. But it wasn't. It was just for help. And then, so when I fought fought him, I didn't know what the hell I was doing. Sure. But uh, from losing that fight, he, he got me in a choke. From losing that fight, I said, oh, you know, let me see what this, this uh, tight, uh, what this jujitsu is. Because he, he knew jujitsu. So I started started training jujitsu. So did you watch the fight after and you're like, 
Okay, so oh, how no did question. he get me? No, there's no, I'm gonna go work no on that. question. No question. No question. No question whatsoever. So when I started training jiu-jitsu and then uh, I started competing. So I started comp- And actually, I'm, I fight the Pan Ams next month in three, four, three weeks. Really? Yeah. I've won the Pan Ams at White Belt, Blue Belt, Purple Belt, Black Belt. So is that March? Yeah, three weeks. Okay. March. March right. 4th, 5th, 6th, and 7th. It's at uh, Irvine. You, you see Irvine. It's is a big it, one. Is that an MMA type no, of thing? No, it's just jiu-jitsu. Straight, straight jiu-jitsu. jiu-jitsu. And so this competition leads to what? Like, what are you no, going to get out of it? So I still do the jiu-jitsu to stay in shape. You okay. know what I mean? It's like, it's a fun thing. I don't have to, you know, beat up myself. No black eyes, no busted lips, and all that other stuff. You don't have to strike. No striking. And you can, it's a gentleman sport, but you can uh, do a lot of, a lot of things with it. And you push yourself, you challenge yourself. If you don't, you got to be tight, you know, got to be in shape to do it. So um, is there, this is a competition. Yes. Is there like a medal or? A- yeah. Yep. You get a, a gold, silver, bronze. Is there a monetary prize? No. Can, no. And this my is, wife says the same thing. This is just for, <laughs> this is just for trophies. Yes. Just for medals. Yep. For pride and medals. And, and, and you know, yes. And, you, and it's what you learn and what you know compared to what another person knows and what they've learned and how they put it all to use. Is my jujitsu good? We'll find out. We'll find out. There you go. <laughs> and it's been a lot of times. It's like it takes guts because you have to be disciplined to use it instead of doing something stupid. And you can lose, you know, just from making a wrong move, which I've done before. I won a lot, but I, I've lost a few. So, what's your wife's name? Robin. And how did you meet Robin? <laughs> for a photo shoot. Photo shoot for my headshots uh, for Shit. acting. Yeah. For real? Yeah. She was uh, did my. Uh, Makeup. And so you guys, or her, or both of you, I'm not sure which, but y'all have a business? Yeah. Well, yeah. Tell me about that business. So Robin. Her last really, name Bunch? Imtaj Bunch. She's, she kept her last name. Okay. So it's Imtaj Bunch. She uses Bunch when it's convenient for her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And this year, this year will be 20 years. 20 years? Yeah. Dude, congratulations. Yeah, this that is yeah. awesome. Yep, yep, yep. And good on her, too, because uh, <laughs> it sounds like you've been through some stuff, and yeah. she was right there Dude. with you. Yep, yeah. yeah. So yeah. tell me about y'all, uh, y'all's business. Is so, it y'all or her? Yes, it's us. Okay. It's us. She created some hair and skin products. It's all natural. She, her wife is from Trinidad, so she she does a lot of natural she loves the natural thing you know, okay she doesn't, like, she doesn't use chemicals for anything so is this line of products for african-american people no it's, it's for everybody, everybody. okay everybody, everybody. boys girls everybody everyone everyone all right and, and is it in, called mtaj it's called uh well the company is mtaj beauty okay mtaj beauty and uh started off as mtaj hair because we just had one product for hair okay and it's a uh, hair oil started off in, in whole, whole foods Really? Because it was we, we, the product was something that's completely natural. Is something that's completely natural. So we, we thought of figured Whole Foods was the places where everybody goes for stuff that's natural. Right. That makes sense. But we found out that you gotta you get you gotta be able to take yours to each individual store. No way. Really? You gotta I mean, sell you get to a each company. Store? You can get a company that does it. You can do dis- distribution, you can do it. Yeah, for a huge... Yeah. Okay. Exactly. You have to sell to each store? Yeah. That sounds like a terrible business model for Whole Foods. They, they're, they're divided in... Uh, Regions? Yes. Okay. So then you so you have to be in, in each... You have to get accepted in each region. That seems wildly ridiculous. You know, they have companies that specialize in that distribution for it, right? Again, that seems wildly ridiculous. That just seems so crazy. I got an idea. Let's create a business model where we can utilize as many middlemen as possible. So so here's the thing. <laughs> if you think about it, it's not on you, the business hopefuls, to go after those people. It's on them to come after me. You want your product in my store? I know, but that's just weird. Because their whole goal is to make money. And it, if they're selling your product over here, chances are over here people are going to want it too. If it's a, Maybe. That's just weird. Maybe. I mean... I, I don't know. You know, maybe. 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 Okay, so it's not just hair. It's also... Hair and skin. And skin. Skin. So like the whole skincare line? Oils. Men and women. Is Men it just oils? Yeah. 
It's just it's essential oil. Do you use it? Yeah. Because you look really young, young. dude. Yeah, see? You really do. You look super <laughs> yeah, young. Yeah. Like, when I first saw you, I was like, that can't be him. That guy's too young. Yeah, no. Yep. Wow. You see my wife, too. She, man, it's all that natural stuff, man. The coconut oil is from, from the islands. That's what she that's what she grew up on. That stuff. Does she have like a crazy island accent? She has an accent, but she gets angry. <laughs> and you get it. <laughs> you get angry, I got it. You, you, you hear it. That's yeah. funny. <laughs> yeah. But the company is growing, changing. When we first came we've been around for seven years now, eight years now. Besides Whole Foods, where are y'all available? I know um, there's a website. What's the website? Yes, Mtaj Beauty. Mtaj Beauty. E M T A G E Beauty. Mtaj Beauty. E M T A G E Beauty. Beauty. Right. Com. Dot com. Iherb. Dot com. We're sold all over the world because Iherb. Dot com is the largest all natural product company in the world. And I H E R B. I H E R B. Iherb. Dot com. And we're sold on there, and that's where they, a lot of people they buy from us a lot. Because they're sold all over. We have people from China, Russia. They, and I'm sure you're on Amazon. Right? Amazon. On Amazon. There you go. Yep. Cool. Go to the website. My website. Click on the Amazon link. Buy all of it. There you go. <laughs> it helps everybody out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's work. I'm sure it is. Oh, Especially yeah. if you got to go sell into each individual region. So who drives the short straw? Who gets to go do that? This is, is it thing, you? Man, is it her? I would do it. I do it. But my wife, like you're thinking, she don't, she don't, she don't think that's a good... It seems just crazy, stupid. Man. I think it's a terrible idea, really. But that's the way it is. Nuts. Or you can get the middleman to do it for you. So besides that, is that all she does? Does she have a salon or anything like that? No, she has no salon. So she's just in touch. That's what she spends most of her time on. But my, she's also a photographer. She done all, she does all my headshots. That's how y'all met, right? So she did all my headshots, and she does a lot of headshots for you know here. She does. So that, that reminds me to ask you, what's going on with your acting career? Are you done? No, it's uh, it's not that I'm done. I still do. I still do. I have one or two commercials right now. Commercially, I still book stuff. Still do it. Theatrically, if it comes to me, I still audition. I don't actively pursue it now because it just got to the point where I kept changing agents, kept changing agents, and none of the agents that I was working with had any level where they would get phone calls taken. They didn't really have any juice? None. So your roles were kind of dwindling? It was the same thing. Security guard number three or something? Yeah. Okay. You know, and, and, and after you've done, after I've done, you know, special guest star, guest star, right? And then you, you get this little small thing again. It's like, like literally, you and I can go in for the same thing. And you start today, and I've been doing it since 1995. And we're going up for the same role? And we can go in for it. They can call for the same thing. That seems, uh, <laughs> wow. Right, you, you, you know? Yeah, so it's, it's, so it's got to a point where I'm like, man, do I really? So I started doing my own thing. I, I've, I've been working on this television show that for about three years that I created and was ready to go. And it's always something that comes up really? and it changes it, you know? So it's, you just gotta, I just got to keep plugging at it, keep plugging at it. But the best way to do it for me right now is to create my own or produce somebody else's, you know, or somebody brings something to me right. and I produce it. That To me, that's that's a better situation. Waiting for the phone to ring. Waiting for the phone to ring. It's like you're back on draft day. Waiting for the phone to yeah. ring. Just waiting for the phone to ring. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Well, what are your plans? Well, like I said, I got this TV. Well, you got the, 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 the TV Pan Am. You no, know, the, 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 the fights, that's, a, that's, that's something just to keep me that's just a in hobby. shape. Right, yeah, okay. it's just a hobby. I ain't making no money off of that. Okay. Uh, but but so I do have my production company. Good. Oh, you have a production company? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. First Time Productions has been around since 98. Okay. I'm sorry, 98, 2008, not 98. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was like, uh, yeah, right. no, 2008. I'll, I'll, I'll do that uh, later, but I'm yeah. right now. Yeah, no, 2000. Where I, I mean, I, I've done a lot of commercials. I've done many, many, like over 100 commercials. Sometimes, as most of the time, as an actor, but also production. So that's why I, I want to like do start doing my own TV stuff. 
And now you can do it so much cheaper. Online, you can have all kinds of things going on online. And you have the opportunity to, to get a following from that and then take that to, instead of just taking the pitch of a show. Right, you can say, not only do I have this pitch, but I got all these fools that are ready. Or I got all these fools that, that watch this, that watch, here's the pilot, I put it up on YouTube, it's blah, blah, blah. You know, I got this many views. Right. I'm going to bring an audience with me. Yeah. And that's what it is now. And now you have Hulu, Amazon, Netflix, and so many channels now, man. It's that, insane how many channels there are. They it's need crazy. content. I need content. Yeah. I had one for, with NFL Network, and still, still may happen, but it just takes time. I guess in this industry, I'm supposed to hope you break both of your legs. <laughs> <laughs> but considering your history yeah, with legs, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't yeah. want you to break anything. I just yeah. want to wish you good luck. It has become not if you stay in it, how long you stay in it. Well, good luck to you on that. <laughs> Thank I hope you. that works out. I hope. As we're finishing up, tell everybody where they can find you on social medias and websites and for sure and, and hit us with with your company website again. yeah it's bunch time productions is the website and that's for all type of production stuff instagram is jared bunch for the number four real twitter is jared bunch facebook is jared r bunch jared r bunch yeah and Imtaj Beauty? Imtajbeauty.com okay. is our beauty line website. My wife, Robin Imtaj. There you go. I, I've seen some, some photos of you guys at events. Uh, <laughs> that is a knockout couple, man. <laughs> you guys make the room pretty good. Yeah. 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 I married up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? I did the same thing. All right, cool. Yeah. Well, again, thank you so, so much. Two months later. Guys, this is a phone call two months after the initial interview so that we can find out about how he did at the Pan Am Games. Here you go, guys. My phone call with Jared Bunch. Jared Bunch, man. What is up? <laughs> Steve Owen. What's happening? How are you? I'm, I'm doing good. I'm um, recuperating. Still training. So what's up? I am so excited to get to talk to you. When the last we spoke face-to-face, -face, at the very end of our interview, you were telling me about how you were about to go off to compete in the Pan Am Games, and you weren't really sure how you were going to do because I think you said it had maybe been a while since you had sparred or, 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 whatever, or competed. And tell me how it went. Uh, well, I, I won uh, – well, actually, I won – gold, uh, double gold, took double gold. I won my weight division and I won the open weight. But I've won the the event six times. I won it at every belt, This uh, second time winning a black belt. But uh, for the last two years, I didn't put, uh, compete because I had hernia surgery two years ago, right before the event took place. And then the following year, I didn't do it because I hadn't trained. And then this year, I had hernia surgery again. I, I had a reoccurring hernia. I got the surgery done in December, and I made a commitment that instead of letting myself get out of shape after after surgery, I was going to go right back into work. And the, the uh, event took place in March, so I knew I had to get at get to work right away, and it worked out for me. That is phenomenal. So you won. So. I've never been to an event like that. The only thing that I can compare it to is the tournament at the end of Karate Kid. Is it like that where you, you fight somebody and then you win and then you fight somebody else and then you win, you fight somebody else? Is it like that? That's right. It is a single elimination tournament and the Pan Games, uh, well, Pan Jiu-Jitsu tournament is the second largest. The largest is the uh, World Championships. You win, you continue on. You lose and, and your day is over. So that's one of the reasons why I didn't do it the last couple of years because you have to train. You, you can't just get up one day and think you're going to get in it and, and win because it, it's a commitment. You don't win that first match. It's, it's all over with. It could be, it could be over in a second. So this year, as it has been the last maybe 10 years, it has been oh, over 10 years. It's been held here in California. It's a nice place to come when, when people are coming from, they come from all over. They come from uh, different countries, different states, and um, it's nice weather. So <laughs> so what did your wife say? Because I think that we had talked about it, and your wife was kind of along the lines of, um, you're crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, she has her concerns, you know, because the surgery was in December, and it was a re recurring hernia. 
So she didn't want me to rush and have, you know, something happen again. You know, so the last, the first time, right. two years ago, when I had when I had the surgery, they actually were, were going to fix one, and as they got in, they found a second one, and oh. so this time it was only one, but they couldn't use the machine. They tried to fix it with the machine, you know, with the with mechanical arm and all that, and they couldn't do it that way, so they had to actually cut me, and so she didn't want me to rush. You know, and and make a mistake and and start fighting again with, you know, and create a, a, another problem down the line. So that was her concern. But she she's always wanted, you know, she she's always been a big supporter. She never goes to the tournament though. <laughs> well, that's because she cares about you too much to see you get hit. That's right. That's right. And there's no there's no hitting, no kicking or whatever. Jiu-jitsu is is it's like a wrestling, it's like a submission wrestling term. That's why you can do it at, at you know, I'll be 50 in August. That's why you can still do it. <laughs> uh when you do it so it's, it's like points. So no it's points. Like no, you no, get no, points. No, you do get points, but it's not like the point where you touch what you get points for, you get points for you take the person down, if you take their back, if you get them in a mount. If you uh, have them down and control them with your knee on their belly where they can't move, gotcha. and you get all those points, but it also can end quicker than that with a submission. If you get someone in a submission and they submit, they submit, they tap out. That's it. It's over. Otherwise, uh, there's a time limit. Uh, when that time is up, whoever has the most points, they're the winner. If it is a tie at, that, at the end of regulation time. Then there are three judges, and it's a majority wins. So in my case, though, in the finals of the ultra heavyweight, it was a tie, but I won a unanimous decision. It was uh, two points and two and two advantages apiece, and I won a unanimous decision. And actually, the person who I beat the last two years, he has won the world, and I haven't been competing. So it's, uh, and I actually, he beat me uh, seven years ago. In the world, he he did beat me, so I was I was looking forward to beating against him. <laughs> <laughs> so while you were gone, he was winning. Oh, he's been a black belt. He's a a much more ranked black belt than I'm. He's he's like a fourth or fifth degree black belt. So when we fought the first time seven or seven or eight years ago, it was the first worlds that I did as a black belt. And he had already been a second degree black belt. So when I went, was competing, going against him, I was so nervous to, to go up against a guy who's, who's been around so long and who has been competing. You know, I'm older than him, but he has been competing a very long time and he's been winning a very long time. So seven years ago, I was, I, it was very humbling. I was very nervous to fight against him, but this time I was looking forward to it because now I, you know, I'm, uh, it'd be like eight years that I'll be a black belt. Second degree, I'd be working on my third degree. So I was looking forward to it. He's a super nice guy, too, though. It's actually uh, Chael Sonnen's jiu-jitsu coach in MMA. Oh, okay. His name is Fabiano Scherner. Super nice guy. Gotcha. So you won two gold medals. How many does that make total for you? Ooh, whoa, boy. It just says black belt or from beginning? Because I, I, I've been fighting. In the, I have fought in the Pan Ams. I won gold at white belt, gold at blue belt. I won gold at purple belt, gold at brown belt, and a bronze at brown belt. And this is the second time that I've won gold at black belt. But this time I did, I won the, I fought the open. Every year I did not always fight the open. So the last time I fought as a black belt, I won my weight. I didn't fight the black belt. This time I did the uh, open weight and my weight. So I, I, I'm, how many is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's eight plus a bronze, right? Did I count right? Right. Yeah. Yep. Wow. So what's next? You're going to go to the world? So the Master Worlds is in August. I haven't made up my mind as to if I'm going to commit myself to doing that because some other exciting news going on is that I may be going back into coaching. Really? Yes. And so uh, I may take the head coaching job at Beverly Hills High School. <laughs> no kidding. Yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. It's a, there's the opening. It just worked out that way that I was going to help them. I was going to, because they're right down the street from me, I was going to yeah. help coaching. And the head coach 
uh, he resigned and it came up that, uh, you know, would I be interested in being a head coach there? And so uh, I'm thinking about it. Actually, even went in an interview for the job yesterday or Friday, Friday. And so we'll see. This week we'll find out. It will be determined this week if I if I take the job or get the job. Or Whoa, that's fantastic, dude. <laughs> yeah. Well, wait a minute now. That's really cool. But I have my work. If, if if I do take the job, I have my work cut out for me. They have not won a game in two years. Yeah, but everything I know about you screams bring me a challenge. That's all you do is accept challenges and attack the unsurmountable. I mean, that's in your wheelhouse, man. That's what you're all about. Well, I hope I'm prepared for it. Well, you know how all those kids feel because of your high school experience. Like, it's not like you guys were winning. Y'all were terrible. That's exactly why I started the, the interest of me coaching there. It's, you hit it right on the head. Right. You've been in their shoes. Exactly. Now, exactly. granted, they're all going to 90210, so they're all rich. You aren't in their shoes. <laughs> but, I mean, you've been in the shoes of, you know, like, they, they want to win. They're just not. So, oh, yeah. dude, I think that's amazing. Yeah. The reason why there's been a change, because Beverly Hills High School used to be, or public school, their athletics used to be very good. And that was because they allowed – outside students to attend you know you didn't have to live in in the community to attend the high school right in the district in the district and that rule changed so since there's a lot of private schools now where private school you know you you pay the tuition you can go where the right. public high school where you have to be now you have to live in that district in order to attend and a lot of the people who live in the district they go to a private school that makes sense you know, that, that district has money to send their kids to private school. So, yeah. wow, that's that's really great news, man. And I hope I didn't mess it up by saying this before I got the job. <laughs> well, here's the thing. I won't air this until I find out. There you go. So I'll, I'll clip it all out if it doesn't happen. But if it does, I'm going to put just a little bit of note right there at the end that says, oh, and by the way, it did happen. There you go. There I'm you go. so happy for you, man. That is really, really cool. I'm happy to. It's, it's good. Now, I don't know if you've seen, but I've been telling Michael B. Jordan and Sylvester Stallone that since they're they're casting for Apollo 2, they need to call you up, or Creed, or whatever it's called. They need to call you up. Yeah. I don't... I didn't. Where where'd you say that? I'll, I'll look that up, and I, I'm support. I'm in support of that. I, you know, uh, yeah. Stallone used to work. He used to work out at the same gym I work out at. You need to reach out and get a hold of that dude because you are. I mean, you're you're perfect for that movie. Any Creed boxing movie, you're perfect for. You already know how to act. You've already played a boxer. You're athletic. I mean, come on now. I was tweeting at both of them. Neither one of them answered me because you know they don't know me. But I was tweeting at both of them. <laughs> I think they start shooting either this month or next month. Well, get on it, dude. Reach out. Tell your agent to get off his butt and go do something. Yeah, yeah. Because you know you were you're a good fit for that probably. movie. Yeah, that's for sure. I know. Oh man, this, that'd be amazing. You know, good fit for a lot of movies. But if it was that simple, oh, that's true. Man, that is so awesome. Well, listen, I know that you got a busy day ahead of you. You got a big decision to make. And, dude, I really, really appreciate you calling me to tack this on to the end so everybody finds out how you did it at the Pan Am Games. And now we got another little thing we're waiting on, just another little piece of information to complete this story. <laughs> yeah. That is so cool. Thank you so much, Jared. I want you to have a great and blessed day, dude. I mean, the clouds are already parting where you are, and there's no rain on you, man. It's all sunshine and roses, at least right now. And let's just keep that going, man. Thanks, man. You have a good one. I'll talk to you later. All right, cool, man. I'll keep in touch to find out how this goes. Okay. Bye, -bye. All right. Bye, man. Hey, guys. Just a quick post-episode note to let you know that Jared Bunch was offered and did accept the head coaching job for the Beverly Hills High School football team. So reach out and support and show your love. This dude has a big job ahead of him. But given what we have just heard from this two-part interview... Pretty sure he's up to the challenge. Thanks, guys. Opening music is the song Magnolia from the 2014 album In Transigence. 
used with permission from Douglas Myers Clark. Closing music is Apollo from the 2001 album Into the Known by the band Sapphire. Thanks for hanging out with us and getting to know a little bit about our guest. We'll see you next time on Fascination Street.